What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster here, back on the live stream on this uh, Monday night, January 30th, 2023. It's about 9.42 p.m. here along the West Coast in California. And uh, things shaking out here a little bit. 1.2 down there into the Southern California region. The uh, latest quake up there on the Earthquake 3D globe. Let's go ahead and check out uh, activity across the region of the West Coast, starting down here. I'm still seeing a little little cluster of earthquakes along the San Jacinto fault zone. A little bit of activity working its way here along the North American plate boundary as well, just on the, uh, again, just on the North American side of this plate boundary. That's going to be the southern branch here of the San Andreas Fault. This activity kicking up here just to the east. We did see a little bit of activity, uh, uh, including a couple smaller quakes and a 1.7 just earlier this evening. Relatively shallow as well. Uh, for that earthquake activity within this swarming area a uh, bunch of microquakes but this is very typical here along the san Jacinto fault zone a little bit of activity also off the coast here of the uh ventura area got uh quite a few ones and some twos kicking off early this morning uh, all this earthquake came in within uh oh, roughly about an hour or so of each other we haven't really seen any further activity ramping up here uh, throughout the afternoon or evening time period just a little bit of uh uptick all of a sudden and then it's died down so we'll watch that for some potential uh swarming uh further swarming looking at the depth of those earthquakes there look uh roughly all over the place had some that are pretty close to the surface there of the ocean oceanic crust and then some way down there uh at about 10 kilometers or so a little bit of interesting activity popping off there this morning, Long Valley Super Volcano, a couple small little specks of an earthquake around Mammoth Lakes. Overall, uh, just a little bit of movement there in that state, or in the uh, that portion of the state. Bay Area, got about five earthquakes or so, some ones and uh, even a two near the Seven Trees, California area. Uh, this activity around the Clear Lake Volcanic Field, very typical. Now the California region up north around the Cascadia, last earthquake was a 2.1 coming into the area nothing really uh being listed up north across the area of the cascadia let's give a quick glance here at the cascadia trimmer map tonight and uh wow surprisingly it's showing nada zip zero no epicenters whatsoever after uh, oh about a week or so of uh pretty much about a hundred or so each day a couple hundred trimmer events around the Cascadia the southern end of it in Northern California but today zero that could explain the uh, lack of activity we're currently witnessing up here right now but we'll continue to watch that <clears throat> a little bit of activity around the Newberry volcano over here in Oregon 0.2 and a 0.4 we'll check out the uh, trimmer map or the uh, volcanic map here in just a little bit a little bit of activity up in Washington, but overall, some uh, just a little bit of min minor movement. Did have that 4.1 up into Montana around noontime today, shaking things up up around the Livingston area. Now, it was felt uh, pretty broadly over the area. This region does see some large earthquakes on occasion, uh, but for now, looks like um, well, at least just that 4.1 coming in. Reported some light and moderate shaking around the area of uh, Big Timber, Bozeman area, and the Manhattan region of Montana. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Yellowstone National Park. It looks like a little bit of activity following that 4.1 down here. And for that, let's go ahead and check out the latest overview here of the seismographs. There is that 4.1. Uh, a very nice signature there on the Yellowstone graphs. That's going to be the darker, uh, thick red line here. Uh, following that, again, we've seen a little bit of uptick in earthquake activity. A couple small microquakes there being listed. No major swarm to take note of here across the area uh, and also around the borehole area. It looks like that uh, interesting activity we're watching. I think these are some type of eight ice quakes out there. Uh, come, Kind of came to a halt over the past few hours, so not really seeing anything pop off there across the uh, uh, those seismographs. All right, uh, further east, not a whole lot. Uh, a little bit of movement around the Oklahoma area, of course. Looks like 2.2, the latest. Kicking off earlier this evening out uh, 
Uh, outside of the Kingfisher area, I think there's some oil fields out here once again. Or some fracking operation. Oh, there's quite a bit. You guys can already see them, right? There's going to be these little checkered boxes out here. Those are not farmhouses, but, uh, well, wastewater disposal wells and uh, all sorts of stuff going on where this earthquake struck here. 2.2 out there today. All right, uh, let's see what else we got. Eastern portion of the country, relatively quiet. Middle America Trench, we had a couple small earthquakes this morning. Uh, also off the coast here, Costa Rica, 4.5. Uh, no major movement, though, to report in that area. And a quick glance at the EMSC model shows um, pretty much the same thing as what the USGS is reporting. South America, looks like we're starting to get a cluster of threes down there, a whole bunch, down around the Chile area and into the Peru-Chile Trench. Although only one four-pointer coming in. That one was from last night, but i uh, got to remember there's quite a few threes coming in. Uh, to the area right now over here around the Tonga region got a uh, return of some super deep earthquake activity 4.4 548 kilometers deep now that looks like that's the only one being listed here on the map uh, some older movement down here along the Kermadec Trench from last night uh, but overall things look like they're calming down around the New Zealand area currently one earthquake again a 4.8 out here around the Antarctica Australian Plate region. That's going to be this earthquake right down here, 4.8, Western Indian Antarctic Ridge. Uh, looks like about 10 kilometer defaulted depth. A couple different fracture zones out here. If we look at the oceanic crust, all sorts of weird little uh, marks out here. But uh, there's, either way, there's a couple uh, diverg divergent boundaries positioned out there in the uh, around that plate boundary. All right, uh, further north, latest quake, though, shows a, uh, looks like a 4.6 into the Myanmar area, uh, just outside of India. Now, we're watching this zone right here for some potential larger scale activity. We did see this one, 4.9, Andaman Sea area this morning with a little bit of activity up north here. Uh, looks like about 63 kilometers for that 4.6. Uh, I still think we got to see a little bit more activity there to, uh, fill in. It's been awfully quiet here recently. Um, let's see, Java Trench area looks like a couple threes and up around the Maluka Sea region, some threes and fours. Some older movement quakes off the coast of Taiwan and Japan. Western Pacific here along the uh, Kuril Kamchaka and the Izu and Mariana Trench down here. All very quiet for now. Uh, still seeing some activity out here. Into portions of the Middle East, uh, not showing up though on the USGS map. What is, is around the Mediterranean region earlier this afternoon, um, just off the, uh, oh, uh, oh goodness, Tripoli, is that right? Mediterranean Sea region, hopefully I didn't uh, slaughter that. Either way, north off the coast of Libya area. Uh, and that earthquake activity that we were seeing here on the globe, positioned a little bit further east and those regions are, again, situated around uh, the Iran area, northwestern Iran. A couple fours and some smaller quakes out there today. Atlantic Ocean, all calm and clear. Not a whole lot popping off currently. And um, Alaska, looks about the same. Trident volcano kicking up on occasion out here. With a, well, Actually, it looks like it's, um, yeah, it's within Trident volcano area. A couple other mountain ranges. Seen some very small microquakes throughout the day today. The big island of Hawaii, um, not a whole lot going on. It's still uh, obviously Kilauea volcano, still continuing. No major changes here to note. Uh, typical swarming out here around the south uh, eastern edge of the big island around Pahala. All right, uh, let's go back here to the volcanic activity map here. We're going to check out Newberry Volcano there in Oregon. Seen a couple small earthquakes in the red circles there indicated uh, also on the PNSN and the trimmer or the um, USGS map earlier. Just some very small, very small microquakes. And again, this is just way overblown. Not for sure why it's like that. Um, there's those two earthquakes, maybe even three, but it uh, doesn't look like there's any major swarm going on. Just a little bit of very small microquake activity around the um, Newberry Volcano. That was listed up here on the USGS map. Very small, 0.4 and a 0.2. All 
All right, uh, let's see what else we got. Did see an earthquake on the Earthquake 3D Globe earlier up here in Canada. Uh, they have since um, removed that earthquake. No longer up there. Of course, 4.5 looks like into the uh, Yukon area, way up north, 4.5 coming in. That was early this morning. Um, we did see a little bit of activity kicking up here this afternoon at uh, 1333. There's those 333 numbers again. Uh, but overall, yeah, that, that was weird. They had like a four-pointer up here once again, a newer one, and it stuck around for a little bit and then disappeared. I double-checked the uh, Earthquake Scanda map, and uh, the only one that was up there is the one that popped off here just a couple days ago uh, around the Alberta region. Let's see when this one kicked in. Yeah, a couple days ago we had that 4.4 coming in around the uh, Prince George, B.C. area. Nothing really showing up here tonight. Uh, no major earthquakes across Canada currently. Uh, space weather activity is a, uh, another calm deal. Very calm. Not a whole lot going on across the sun currently, but we do like to cover that just to keep folks updated. Right now we're just entering into a very quiet period of, um, well, there's sunspots obviously, but they're you know very minimal in terms of their potency. Uh, and coming around the southeastern limb here, there's another weak sunspot. I don't think it's going to harbor any threat for any major flaring. 75% uh, chance for a C flare, M flare at 15. I think that's pretty elevated. For some reason, they raised up the X flare potential there to 5. Not for sure why. Um, looking at those sunspot regions, I do not see any potential for even an M flare at all. So uh, this little sunspot region they have circled up here, the latest imagery. Looks like this thing may be starting to grow a little bit, but uh, hard to tell right now if it's going to be any uh, threat for any flaring here uh, in the coming days. For now, we'll uh, just wait, see what the sun has to offer us here as we advance towards solar maximum in uh, 2025. Current aurora forecast here shows a little bit of minimal conditions up into the Canada regions. Uh, not a high likelihood, but uh, a little bit popping off there. Looking at the uh, current solar weather trend, a little bit of elevated speed and also a little bit of BZ component there on the south tilt. Um, things a little bit, not for sure exactly where that's coming from. Could be from a coronal hole that had been positioned. Uh, it was a really small coronal hole too a couple days ago. That was earth facing. All right. Um, I think that is about it. Uh, National Data Buoy looks uh, fairly calm. Nothing uh, out of place. Nothing in event mode. Quick glance at the weather. Texas, oh man, there's some ice. They had a lot of ice accumulation out there around the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area. Seen quite a few uh, live streamers out there streaming up the weather. Um, that looks like that's going to scoot off there towards the east. And, uh, well, looks like it's going to pump in some more moisture here from the south although it looks like most of the ice conditions will be uh, focused around the Oklahoma area uh, for us here on the west coast go over here and check this out we got a couple different storm systems uh, coming in um, next one will be right about there which is Thursday into Friday uh, not a big one very thin moisture plume here there's not a whole lot with that uh, but it will bring some snow and rain into the uh, California area a little bit stronger one comes Saturday into Sunday. Um, that low pressure center of basically coming into Oregon, but it is trailing some moisture behind it that will get California a little bit more rainfall. And then there's a very weak system, it looks like, on uh, Wednesday and Thursday around the 8th and 9th, 9th time frame. And uh, just kind of, kind of watching it, seeing how it plays out. Um, you know, I think as long as we have these little shots of rainfall, uh, even on the long-range models here, that's a good, uh, you know, that's that's good for us because here in California it's our winter time, and we're supposed to be getting rainfall. We don't get summertime thunderstorms like uh, potential, you know, the monsoonal moisture down south into the uh, Four Corners area or the Gulf of uh, Mexico area. I'm talking about Texas Southern Plains area where we have that all that warm moist air coming coming down or coming up, I should say, and uh, feeling. Uh, the springtime storms we just don't get that summertime around here in california 115 degrees <laughs> ah goodness all right guys have a good night stay safe out there and um yeah what do we got one more day 
one more day left in the month. Have a good one, guys. We'll catch you. Uh, I'll catch everyone back out here tomorrow sometime. Take care.